Listen up and listen up good. I'm going to share with you what I believe is the key to success. If you don't get this right, you will live a life of mediocrity or possibly fail. Mediocrity is the best case scenario if you don't master this one thing. And that may sound like a grandiose claim. It may sound over the top. I promise you it's not. This is the one thing that if you master it, success will become easy. Balling would be your baseline. Success in relationships, success in business, success in your fitness journey. Anything you want to accomplish is required that you master this one skill. I learned this the hard way. A lot of y'all know my story. When I was in my early 20s, my father killed himself. Boom, blew his brains out, shot himself in the head. The family was left with nothing except for a bunch of bills and problems that he left behind. And my father was like my best friend. Like when I went to Chicago, I hung out with him instead of like guys my age. So while dealing with all the grief of losing my best friend and father, I still had to figure out a way to take care of the family and bring us out of the circumstances from this bad hand that we were dealt. And what happened was I had to control my emotions, right? I was feeling grief. I was feeling severe sadness, some anger, and I had to learn how to control my emotions in a way where I could still perform. I've told the story many times. I started waking up at 4 a.m., training people in the morning, and then showered at the gym. Then I would work eight hours, security guard at the Prada store. And then after that, I worked for my boy's moving company. I did that five days a week. And on the weekends, I woke up trained people. Then I managed my boy's restaurant for the remainder of the day. And I basically did that for two years, working 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week. So I was on a mission. And when I tell people that story, a lot of times they say, man, you were so disciplined. You had a lot of discipline. And I used to think that discipline was the most important thing when it came to success. I used to think that I used to preach that. But when I think about it, now that I'm older, 40 years of life, when I realized it wasn't discipline at all. It was my ability to control my emotion. And when I say control, what I mean is I was able to harness the emotion that was most appropriate for the task at hand. And for me, that emotion was determination, determination to help myself, the determination to build a better future for us all. And with that determination, I didn't need discipline, right? Because discipline means you do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, whether you feel like it or not. I don't feel like it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm not saying that's not important, but there's a higher level, right? If you can master your emotions, you won't even need discipline because you'll want to do it. You see what I'm saying? I put myself in a mental state where I want it to do the things. I wanted to get those four jobs. I wanted to get up early and go after it every day. I didn't do it on purpose though. I was thrust in that position due to the circumstances, but I learned how to harness those emotions. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how controlling your emotions will improve every aspect of your life. Almost all the problems you're dealing with are a result of your inability to manage your emotions. I'm going to show you exactly how you can manage your emotions so you can improve every aspect of your life. I want you to think about something. This is you. Your current circumstances are just the results of all the decisions you made in the past. Think about it. If you broke now because you didn't work on building your financial prosperity in the years prior. If you're fat now it's because you were eating bullshit and not working out in the years leading up to now. All areas of your life, everything you're dealing with is a result of the decisions you made in the past. Now, there are some things that will happen to you that are outside of your control for sure, but how you deal with them and how they affect you is a result of your decisions. So circumstances are, are a result of decisions. However, one thing I know about sales, I've done sales basically my whole life and I've taught literally thousands of people. My team does millions of dollars every year to sell team I built and trained. And one of the core principles to my sales strategy that I teach my students and my sales teams is that the decisions people make are based off of the emotions that they felt at the time they made the decision. For example, I'm sure you've all been mad at some point, really angry, and you've done or said some things that you wouldn't have done or said if you were in a calm, relaxed, confident state. Your emotions impacted that decision that you made. That decision had an outcome. You punched that motherfucker, or you got into a fight, or you yelled at someone, you did something that you wouldn't have done if you were in a calm, cool, confident state. A lot of y'all had sex with people that you wouldn't have had sex with if you weren't like super horny that day. It was late at night, you was drunk, and the four was giving you the eye, and you was like, fuck, I ain't got shit to do. Come over here, four. Poppy Quattro. 
is what the homies started calling you after that. Or Quattro Poppy. I don't know, man. Spanish be in reverse sometimes. But you wouldn't have did that if you weren't super horny and or desperate. But those are emotions. That decision is based off the emotions you felt at the time you made that decision. Your emotions impacted your decision. Your decisions equal your circumstances or the results that you're in right now. Either today or on a larger scale, like your whole life, like the house you live in, if you had more money, you'd probably live somewhere else. But the reason you don't have enough money is because of whatever decisions you made in the past. Motions equal your decisions. Your decisions equal your circumstances or results. If you can learn how to control your emotions, you'll make better decisions. And if you make better decisions consistently, you'll have a better life. Hope everybody's getting it. If you can control your emotions, you can make better decisions. If you make better decisions, you have a better life. It's real simple. But if you can't control your emotions, well, then you can't fully control your decisions. And if you can't fully control your decisions, then you are a liability to yourself and others. Prisons filled with people who made bad decisions. But let's say you make the right decision. Let's say you, you control your emotions. Let's make it a workout context. Are you going to work out today? You put yourself in a determined state. You say you're going to do it anyway even though you don't feel like it, right? That's discipline, right? Cool, maybe you just, want, you just want to use discipline instead of what I'm talking about. Here's the problem with that. If you want to accomplish something, let's say your workout, that's an action that you take in order to reach your goal, right? That action is going to have results. If you take the right action, you'll get the right results. However, the quality of your actions is actually determined by your emotions. You ever been in a sad mood? Maybe you were sad about something or something bad happened. Sometimes there's one or two things can happen, right? You can either take it out in your workout and have a better workout, or maybe you have a shitty workout. I mean, it's happened to me before in the past. I had a shitty workout because I was in a shitty mental state. So even though I did the action, the quality of that action wasn't as good. The quality of the results were diminished. For example, I have sales teams, right? And there's guys on the sales team and there's always someone who's outside selling the rest of the team and there's always someone who's underperforming the rest of the team and when i watch their sales calls or even talk to them yeah they're taking all the actions they're doing all the things they're using the script they're taking the calls they're doing all the things they're supposed to do on paper but the emotion is different there's one guy he was having problems with his wife and it was stressing him out so he went into the sales calls with that emotional state and the results weren't as good. You know, he was worse than everyone else on the team and worse than he was in a month prior to his wife tripping. So I had to work with him on controlling his emotions so even if this chick is tripping, talking crazy, he can still show up and perform. And it's important that he does that because no matter what's going on with their marriage, the kids still got to eat food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The kids still got to go to school that he has to pay for. The kids are still going to grow every year and need clothes, right? So he can't allow his wife's inability to control her emotions to control his in a way that it affects his money because that money is what he uses to feed his family. Not only do your emotions dictate the decisions you make, it also influences the quality of your actions. If you go play basketball against someone, but you all sad and shit, you might not play as good as the motherfucker who's happy, confident, and ready to go. One more thing, your ability to manage your emotions will actually dictate what level of success you can achieve. Let's say you're just a regular employee with a low level job, like you stacking boxes. It's not demanding, so you can be in a bad mood and stack boxes. Anybody can do that. In fact, the robots are coming for that job in no time. But then let's say you, you get up to manager, like you in the mid-level management. You a leader now. You're managing people. Oh shit. What if you can't control your emotions when you're managing people? Do you think you'll get the best out of your team or the worst? You ever work with somebody who was always in a bad mood? You ever work for somebody who was always a dick or someone who couldn't control their emotions? What was that experience like? Were you excited to show up to work? every day were you putting your all into that job nah see so a manager who can't control his emotions is less effective than a manager who can't if, if the stress of his life or the stress of whatever's going on in business is getting to him that's going to affect his leadership abilities and let's say you own a business oh man well there's way more stress there because when you would just had a job you only had to worry about your job and when you were just managing a team you just don't have to worry about how your team performs but if you're managing the whole business, now you got to worry about the marketing, the sales, the customer service, wherever product or service you're delivering, you got to make sure it gets delivered well. You got to do everything, especially if you're just starting out. So now there's a whole new level of stress. Stress is an emotion. If you can't manage the emotion of stress, how do you think your business is going to do? I really think that this is the reason why 80% of businesses fail. It's not because business is that hard. It's super simple, man. But people's inability to manage their emotions is why 
most businesses fail. 80% motherfuckers have road rage, get out and just shoot somebody. That's the inability to manage their emotions, man. If you can't handle traffic, how the fuck you gonna run a fucking seven figure business? If your plane gets delayed and you have a fit like a child, how you gonna manage a big business? How you gonna be successful? How you gonna be the leader of your family? Recap, your emotions dictate your, the decisions you make. 100% of the time. You can still feel bad and make the decision. That's discipline, right? If you don't feel like doing something, you do it anyway. However, it's still low level, right? Because the quality of your actions is based off the quality of your emotions. If you're in a shitty state, your performance is going to suffer. And then also your ability to control your emotions actually affects the level of success you can attain. So it's imperative that you learn how to manage your emotions. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. There are three ways to manage and control your emotions. The first one is your environment. This is your surroundings and the people you're with. So you ever clean up your house, clean up your room, you just feel better? Is that ever happened to you? Yeah, we've all felt that way. Your actual surroundings can influence your emotions. If you're at a basketball game, sometimes I'd be at basketball games, courtside, with the homies, Jimmy Butler dunking on people. It's a good experience. In that environment, you get all excited. You feel good in that environment, right? Or if you go to a real nice restaurant, they set the mood in there. They got the lighting. They got the ambiance. You feel better in those circumstances. But it's also the people you're around. You're like, you ever been in a good mood and then somebody with a shitty mood comes around you? How does that make you feel? You feel better or worse? Same thing. Have you ever been in a room and like a puppy runs in all excited, wagging his tail, jumping on people? The whole room lights up. Everybody's emotion changes. You can actually watch them change. You have to consider your surroundings and the people you're around. Those are ways to control your emotions. So if you're feeling bad or you want to switch your emotion instantly, easy way to do it is just go to a different place. Get around some different people. Especially if you want to do it long term. Somebody who's all sour and sad and fucking acting crazy, bitching all the time. However, that's not the best way. And the reason I say that's not the best way, because like we said for here, your circumstances are a result of the decisions you made and decisions are the result of your emotions. What you don't want is your emotions to be a conditional response. And we'll talk that more. You don't want your circumstances, good or bad, to have full control over your emotions because then you're not in control. That means anybody can come around you and change your state. That means you're not in control of your state. Or if like you're somebody, something happens that's out of your control, you're just going to feel anyway or you're going to control your own emotions, right? So yeah, you can use this as a tool, but it's not something you want to rely on or put that much weight on it, right? But it is a way you can control your emotions, right? Your environment. I think it's a more powerful way is your body. No, I don't mean masturbation. What I mean is the way you hold your body, the way you move will have a direct impact on your emotional state. There's studies that show that if you stand a certain or sit a certain way for a certain amount of time, there will actually be a change in your neurochemistry. Cortisol levels drop, that's the stress hormone, and testosterone will rise. When people laugh, and that's using your body, if you laugh, you'll actually release dopamine or real chemical change. It's not like you're tricking yourself. Your body can actually influence your emotional state. And if you're sitting around all sad, moping, like a punk, you're gonna feel that way. And if you sit like this for hours, she don't like me, you'll start to get sad. Do it right now, man. Sit up like you're the fucking man. Even if you're not, even if you a bitch, stand like you're the man. You'll start to feel like you're the man. And if you can do that more often, you'll make better decisions. You'll make the decisions that the man would make. And sooner or later, life is gonna catch up with that. So this is why I do things like I have a treadmill, desk, or a standing desk. Sometimes I'm standing and I work just cause I wanna keep my body active. I have a desk bike that I work on. Just keep the blood flowing. This is the movement. Motion creates emotion. Remember that motion creates emotion. Sometimes if I wanna change my state, I go for a walk. Or sometimes I go work out. There's a lot of things you can do to change your state, but your body is super powerful. But the most important, the best way to change your emotion is what you focus on. Nothing beats that. It's the number one thing. Everything else is just like little tricks and hacks and shit. You can control your focus. You can control everything. Somebody in your family's died at some point, I'm sure, unless you come from a long line of immortals. Right now, you can start thinking about a loved one who's passed and all the times you'll never have with them again. And you can get sad right now. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel, whether it's happening or not. Whether it's true or not, it's probably been something you thought was going to happen and it didn't happen, but you felt like shit when you thought it was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't even happen. I'm real sensitive to people with mental illness. So what I'm about to say is met with love. And I have bipolar too. Keep all that in mind before you come at me for saying what I want to say. Depression is an inability to control focus. Depression is an inability to control focus because there's been times when I was suffering from depression, but there were good things in my life I could have focused on. You know what I'm saying? Fuck my, my health is perfect. I got some amazing family, super white teeth. 
Motherfuckers think they veneers. Nah, they're just clean, and better shaped than almost everyone. But when I was depressed, I was focusing on the things that were going wrong instead of focusing on the things that were going right. Now, I'm not saying you got to ignore those things, right? But you can only focus on one thing at a time. So some things may have went wrong in the past. I was still focusing on these things. Shit that happened like fucking months ago or years ago. I was focused on these things and how they impacted me and I was still feeling them and they were depressing me and it got to the point where it was clouding my vision and I couldn't even see all the blessings that were in front of me, all the good things that were in front of me that I could have been experiencing. Depression is an inability to control focus. All right. Guys, stay here. I want to I'm going to talk about this more cuz I'm not done. I'm going to show you how you can control your emotions now and forever. And if once you control your emotions, you'll be able to control your life, make more money. And if you can't control your emotions, you can't control your money. You can't control your money then you can be a broke boy indefinitely. So, all the circumstances, all the results you have are basically the result of the decisions you made in the past. The decisions are based off the emotions they felt at the time they made the decision. I swear to God. The decisions people make are based off the emotions they felt at the time they made the decision. There's people in jail because they was like really mad and fucking killed somebody. But they wouldn't have killed that person in a different emotional state. People forget. Talk so bad about OJ. OJ Simpson. What would you do if you catch your fucking wife in the <laughs> in bed with someone in your house? I'm not saying I would have killed them people. I'm just saying I understand how someone could have made that decision under those circumstances. I control my emotions. I'm not out here killing people. But not only that, your actions. Let's say you do take action. If you're in a shitty emotional state, how well are you going to perform under those circumstances? So the quality of the action will be diminished, which will impact the quality of those results. And again, we already went over your ability to manage your emotions dictates the level of success you can have, right? If you're just a low level worker, you don't have to perform much, right? Now, but if you're like, if you're a manager, you're managing people. You got to have way more control of your emotions under those circumstances because if you are acting crazy or you're coming in a bad mood or shitty state that's going to impact your team and you're not going to be able to get the best out of them and if you're running a business or oh, there's so many ups and downs and there's no way you can be successful in that regard without controlling your emotions so when you see somebody freaking out or when you're freaking out because of traffic or you missed your flight or some shit oh no you missed your flight you got to stay at the airport for an hour oh my god let's have a fucking panic attack like a child that same person you can pretty much rest assured he's not qualified to run a seven figure business and then three ways to control your emotions the our environment both the people you're around and the actual physical environment you're in your body the way you move motion creates emotion if you ever want to change your state just change your body right sand different walk different go for a walk go outside work out smile laugh watch comedy whatever you need to do all these things the way you move your body will impact your emotion and the studies that show that it'll impact it on a neurological level like your actual neural chemicals will change based off the way you are moving your body and there's a lot of science behind that but the most important what you focus on whatever you focus on you will feel whether it's real or not and again i'm sympathetic to anyone who has any mental illness my family has a history of mental illness my father killed himself i was diagnosed with bipolar too so i'm super sensitive to anybody who has mental illness however i will say that i believe that depression is merely an inability to control focus and happiness is an ability to control focus people say money won't make you happy and there's, i think there's some there's a lot of truth in that i don't think anything should make you happy or make you sad i've been jail cells i've never been convicted of a crime every time i've been arrested it was i was exonerated on all charges miscarriage of justice i was in the cell knowing i was wrongfully accused i, I could have focused on that or focus on the fact that they're giving me, me these nasty peanut butter sandwiches and central bookings. Or I could have focused on that. Instead, I said, I'm control my state. I don't, I'm not going to let my emotions be a conditional response, a response to conditions. So I was in the jail cell laughing, cracking jokes. You know what I'm saying? And I was there for mad long, right? You can control your emotions on, the, on a, any state if you've trained yourself to do so. It's all about focus. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel whether it's real or not. Money won't make you happy. Happiness is, is merely the ability to control focus. Don't believe me? All right, let me bring this up, man. This is the big homie, Marcus Aurelius. Historians call him the greatest emperor of Rome. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Come on, man. This man basically ruled the world. Everyone who wasn't living in a cave or a hut was basically under Roman control. And he goes on to say, this is my, one of my favorite quotes in the world. I'm a big fan of Marcus Aurelius. His book, Meditations, was very impactful for me. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. That's why a lot of people, almost everybody, their emotions are merely conditional responses. You're in a shitty situation. You're feeling bad about it. You're gonna make different kinds of decisions. Your circumstances will keep 
getting worse. Then it's just gonna be a feedback loop. This is where a, di a downward spiral comes from. I don't allow circumstances to control my emotions. I decide how I'm gonna feel. Yeah, it's easier to be in a good mood when things are going your way, but if you depend on that, you're setting yourself up a lot of opportunities for discouragement because your life is not gonna be a unbroken boulevard of green lights. So when people say money won't make you happy or success won't make you happy, what they're telling me is that happiness is super important to them, but they're also telling me that conditions dictate the amount of happiness. So it stands to reason that these motherfuckers don't know shit about making money or being happy because they don't know that if circumstances control your emotions, you can't be happy all the time because things aren't always gonna go your way. That doesn't exonerate you of the responsibility to control your emotions. Now here's the thing. There's gonna be outside circumstances that are gonna try to influence your focus. You think the fucking entire population is gonna conform to your preferences so you can be happy? Of course not. Why would you give people that kind of power over something that's so important to you even if you didn't know what i told you here that your success in all areas of life is dependent on your ability to control your emotions even if you didn't know that if you just wanted to experience the emotion of happiness more frequently why would you give someone else that kind of power odds are they can't even control their emotions and not only are you giving them too much power, you're giving them too much responsibility. Your emotions are your responsibility. That's something you need to write down, regardless of circumstances. So people, and then outside events, there's people who are going to fucking cry when their team gets eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> fucking dorks. Them motherfuckers don't even know you, and they wouldn't like you if they did know you. Cause you the type of motherfucker to cry cause a fucking team lost a game, you fucking loser. Imagine the kind of person who lets outside events control their emotional state. Is that the kind of person you want to lead you? Do you want to go to war with that person? Do you want that person to be manning the ship you're on? Or do you want somebody who's steady, steadfast, regardless of how wild shit is getting, person is focused and he stays calm and steady? That's who you want to be. You need to be that person. It's real easy to blame outside of events or other people for your emotions, but your emotions are your responsibility and no one else's. So you have to decide if you're gonna take responsibility or not. And if you decide not to, just know that it's gonna impact every area of your life and you're forfeiting really tremendous power. The truth is we all just wanna be happy. Everybody wants to be happy, but you can't let other people control your happiness. You can't let outside events control your happiness. The politician I like didn't win. All right, man, what are you gonna do? Nothing. Remember what Marcus Aureli said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Once you realize this, you have true power. I'm not saying bad shit didn't happen to you. Bad shit happened to me. My father blew his fucking brains out on a fucking Tuesday morning, right? First thing in the morning. That, that sucked. And it, it definitely impacted my, I, I'm not a robot, but I was still able to control my focus enough to perform. I'm not saying you'll be impervious to all of this. People will have an impact, but you can't allow them to control it. That's when you have to be more focused and your ability to control your focus, whatever you think about your feel. So if you're depressed all the time, it's probably because you're focusing on things that are depressing all the time. If you're happy all the time, you're probably focusing on things that are making you happy. You get what I'm saying? So the thing is you can train yourself to do this. It's one thing to just say it. But it's another thing to put it into practice and to really start training yourself. So here's what I did. Again, I have bipolar two, and I don't take any medication for it because I have trained myself to feel how I want to feel. It's a habit. So what I used to do is before the iPhone was invented, right? I was doing this for a long time. I used to keep a little notebook in my pocket, one of them tiny little moleskin notebooks, and I would mark it one to 10. And one would be like a guy with a bottle of Jack Daniels and a revolver trying to decide if he's going to go to work. Or not this morning, you know what I'm talking about? That's one. And 10 is is when, be like when, how Drake felt when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA Finals. He was pretty happy. That brother was excited. That's my state, my emotional state. And then I have time on this axis. These are the hours of the day, right? 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., the hours that I'm awake. And every hour, every two hours, I would just mark, hey man, where, where am I on the graph? So initially when I started doing this, it was like a lot of lows, a lot of lows. I was in a bad spot, but then I would notice that there was some highs, right? It was peaks and valleys. And each one of these dots re represents like your momentary state, how I felt at that exact moment. And what you'll notice is your emotional state actually fluctuates throughout the day. That's all of us. It fluctuates throughout the day. These dots are what I call momentary state. Now, if you added these together and got the average, that's what we call your, like your baseline state. That's what this red highlight. And your baseline state is really the average. It's the sum total of momentary states, okay? So when people say they want to be happy, I don't think they mean they want unbroken happiness indefinitely and to never feel a negative emotion again. I don't think that's what they mean. I think what they really mean is they want their baseline state to be higher. 
That's what I believe they mean. I hope that's what they mean. I hope these motherfuckers aren't delusional and thinking there'll never be anything that's going to cause a negative emotion in your life. It's a fucking joke. Now, what I would do is I would mark, I would take notes of the highs and I would take notes of the lows. And initially, I just tried to have less lows, like less lows. So I would find the things that were making me low. A lot of times it was what I was focused on, so maybe something happened. And when I did that, I would notice just by eliminating the lows, what is that going to do? That's going to raise the average. And then whatever the highs were, I tried to make them happen more often, increase the frequency of the highs, as well as I started looking for other things that were synonymous with that, that I could do more often. And it's got to be positive things, right? Because yet you could hit a high emotional state by doing drugs or partying, but that's not stuff you can do habitually. And that's not stuff that's going to be good for you in the long term. You know, I would take note of it. And then what I know is over time, not instantly, what happens is you kind of start to train your nervous system, right? And I just noticed I just hit my, not only was my, is it more stable, my emotional state more stable, it was less volatile, but I had higher highs, higher lows. So my lows weren't as low as the other lows and the highs were higher. And what happened was my app improved. I actually was happier and I had data to support it. Right. When people say, I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. How happy are you now? Let's start taking it seriously. Let's fucking track it. If it, that's so important to you, fucking track it. And that's what I did. And what happens was I, I actually trained my nervous system to be more happy. Everything is a habit. LeBron James doesn't have to think about how to dribble a basketball. He just sees bad. He just does it. He doesn't have to think. It's ingrained in his nervous system. Your emotions can be ingrained in your nervous system. Here's the thing. Emotions aren't even real, right? They're all in your head. They're not tangible. You can't hold them or touch them. It's literally all in your head. Emotions are different combinations of neurochemicals going off in your head. This is why doing drugs feel so good because they either cause your body to release neurochemicals on its own or they mimic the neurochemicals that your body already has. But you can manufacture it yourself and you can learn how. You can train your yourself to be happier more often. It's like you can train yourself to do anything, but you have to be serious about it. And that's the best way to do it. I know is to actually track it every hour. Now I still do it to this day. I use an app called uh, iMood Journal. I'm not endorsed by them. They should reach out to me, give me a bag though. You know what I'm saying? It does the same thing. It's like one to 10. And I just mark it and it gives me the summary. It's like right here, easy access. Right next to Stripe where the money is, my fitness pal, the fitness, and then the slacks where I talk that business. Most important shit right there. It's the first one because this is the most important thing. I think this is the key, managing your emotions. The second way to do that is meditation. Meditation has been super pivotal in my life. It's the main reason I'm calmer than most people in the midst of stressful situations. Tony Robbins tells a story in his book, Waking the Giant Within. I read that when I was 17, changed my life. And he told a story about when he was learning to drive race cars. They put him in like a practice car. He had a co-pilot. He was driving the race cars. And the driver would like hit a button to make him skid into a wall. And his job was to skid out of it. The instructor said, don't look at the wall. Look at where you want to go. And Tony just couldn't get it. And the guy pushed the button. And Tony Robbins was looking at the wall. And the driver fucking grabbed his head and made him look where he wanted to go. And then he turned. A lot of times when we're depressed or angry, it's because we're looking at the wall instead of where we want to go. So I've really trained myself to, under all circumstances, to always look where I want to go. It's not even like positive thinking. It's like all this shit's going wrong. Cool. But where do we want? What do we want to happen? Let's focus on that. Let's focus on where we want to go. And what that does is it invigorates me in a way. Because if you look at what would happen and what went wrong, you're going to get sad, right? Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel. But if you look at where you want to go, you might be more determined. You might be like, all right, cool, let's go, let's do it. You're going to have experience a different emotion by changing your focus. And it's super critical that you like train yourself to do that. It takes training. I don't think anyone's born like that. That's where this comes in. That's where meditation comes in. The way it helps the most is things won't affect you as much emotionally. However things will still affect you right and you got to change your focus man it's super critical if you can do this you can succeed in life man and if you can't man you're destined for mediocrity at best mediocrity is the best case scenario if you can't control your emotions because it's like my man warren Buffett said warren b if you can't control your emotions you can't control your money listen i want to control my money and the way you do that environment body and focus do not let other people Control your emotions, then it's not one, it's not their responsibility. Your emotions are your responsibility, not anyone else's. And do not let outside events control your emotions because you can't control it. So anything you can't control, you can just say, hey, fuck it. But you can always control something. Never let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can do. Don't look at the wall, look at where you want to go. Another thing I always say is yesterday don't pay. Yeah, a lot of this bad shit happened, wild shit going on. You had some setbacks. You've had some challenges, man. I'm not trying to diminish stuff that a lot of people have been through. But yesterday, don't pay. You might have some real good excuses. Real good, like actually good excuses where if people heard them, they'd be like, you know what? I feel you, man. 
However, can't feed your kids with those excuses, baby. Yesterday don't pay. But even more than that is, let's just take success out of it, right? You can't be happy by focusing on bad shit that happened in the past. Even bad shit that you're experiencing right now, you just can't be happy under those circumstances. So if you want to be happy, you can be happy without the money. You got to change your focus. You got to train yourself to do it. And your whole life will improve as a result.